Arshay Jones' case drew national headlines. She's a woman indicted on manslaughter charges after she had a miscarriage when she was shot by another woman during a fight. Her case sparking question of who's to blame. Well, Mark White is Marcia Jones' attorney. He's joining us now. And Mark, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Sure, happy to be here, Art. Good to see you again. Good to see you again as well. Now, after District Attorney Lenise um, Washington dropped the charges against Marcia Jones, I remember you saying that you and Jones both choked up and then she told you thank you. Yes. So how are your client doing this morning? What's her state of mind now? Well, we've spent the last few days uh, having what I call a support team. And that's a group of volunteers and dedicated uh, people who have been helping her deal with the trauma she's been through, helping her get uh, the right counseling, helping her get the right health care. And so her family and that sport team have largely been working with her the last two to three days, mm -hmm. uh, trying to make sure that she gets the necessary support she deserves. Legally, what were your thoughts when Lenise Washington dropped those charges against Jones? Well, uh, the district attorney did the absolute right thing. We had always thought, once we saw the indictment and saw the substantial flaws in it, we had always thought that when a person who was knowledgeable in the law and who was doing the right thing read the motion to dismiss that we filed, that dismissal would have been the appropriate remedy. And so uh, I would say she did the right thing. Now, according to the grand jury, that they say that Jones intentionally caused the death of her unborn baby by initiating that fight, knowing she was five months pregnant, and that actually violated an Alabama code. You dispute that, don't you? Yes, absolutely. So. Well, the, the, the code of Alabama provides that a mother can't be held responsible for the death of the unborn child. So you start with that definitional premise. Then when you apply that, the facts in this circumstance uh, to the situation, the charges were inappropriate. But the, the actual charging instrument was defective. What about the facts? They said that she caused the fight. What do you say? Well, uh, we have the advantage that apparently others did not have. And that is, as part of our investigation, we got video of the actual incident. And so I know what the timing is and I know what happened and while there was an altercation you don't get to use deadly force art just because somebody pulls your hair mm -hmm. uh, and also the the person was seated in an automobile the accounts I've read from other people do not match the video total altercation was about eight seconds mm -hmm. before she pulled the trigger and our client was in a position of retreat uh, she had her hands up uh, when the bullet was fired. Who's looked at that video at this point? Uh, our investigators have looked at it, uh, and I, I don't believe that anyone else has seen it at this point. Uh, we had, fortunately, I had Debbie uh, Berger as an investigator, Hope Marshall, brilliant young lawyer at our firm. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that got out there did the hard work, yeah. found it existed, and located it. About 10 seconds left here. What's next for Marche? Uh, we don't know. Our, our investigation is still continuing because we're determined that this is not going to happen again. Okay. Well, I know we can't settle it all here, but nope. thank you for coming in. I'm sure there will be more on this case coming forward. Thank you, Art. All right, Good. Mark, thanks a lot.